Hey guys, I am the Donovan. I am a classically trained concert pianist. Music is my life. I have been able to be generous because I am that blessed. Both of my parents grew up dirt poor. And I was able to hustle, grind. I put myself through school. I'm slowly trying to break all of these generational curses. I've always been great with money. Home, paid for, cash, easy. My closet is full of designer. I don't really have to budget. That's more than I thought I was spending. I have a nonprofit organization where I give back to families in need. During the holiday season, we were able to service over 1,500 people, giving them food for the holidays. And it was one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done, even though I'm broke. Going from broke empowers young people drowning in debt. Ugh, I can't do this. To become the CEOs of their own lives. I'm Dan Rosenzweig, CEO of Chegg. My co host, Tanya Rapley, and I are here to help people find their way out of suffocating debt. This is the year. What you're about to see are real time, unfiltered conversations airing the same week in which we shot them. This is Going From Broke in real time. Hi, The Donovan. Hi there, how are you? I am <laughs> phenomenal, <Donovan>. I'm Dan. <laughs> Hi Dan, hi Tanya, I know the both of you. Your, rep your, <laughs> your reputation precedes you. And oh, yet you still you, made Donovan. the phone Yours call. too. <laughs> Fill us in, how did you become The Donovan? The Donovan. <laughs> so, the Donovan, the one and only. Uh, I've been the Donovan for a long time now. Uh, for a long time. I <laughs> have dedicated my entire life to the art and the craft and the science of music. And I've always been so different. I wanted to be as identifiable in my name as I am in my everyday persona. So, you know, and then it just became, you know what? I am the one, the only, the Donovan. So when your mom calls you, does she say, hey, the Donovan? It took a lot of work to accomplish that great feat. But yes, <laughs> she knows. <laughs> yes. Since the pandemic started, the Donovan completely lost his income, but still spends at his pre-pandemic levels, putting him around $6,400 further in debt every month. He claims his current total debt is $82,000. Interestingly enough, I've always been great with my money. You know what I mean? Um, if I say so myself. Uh, you know, I paid cash for my first home and I was 21 years old. I was a baby. You know what I mean? And I don't know anybody in my circle that's ever done anything even close. So. I was, I've always been on top of my game and I've always been um, responsible, but you know, I never prepared for a time when I wasn't going to have massive amounts of money just strolling in. But one of the challenges that you face and one of the reasons we're here is your extraordinary early success at building the brand and the performer, the Donovan, meant you didn't prepare at all for your financial future. You just said, I have money, I'll spend money. I have money, I'll spend money. And um, that isn't is being true. good with your money. Yet yeah, look, I, I've never seen a balance sheet that says zero annual income, <laughs> $82,000 in loans, zero savings, $900 porch, $1,000 a, uh, a month on self-care products, um, it feels like you're living the life of the Donovan at 21, but it's time for the Donovan to become the CEO of the Donovan. There's going to be two personas here. There's going to be the business person and the performer. And if you don't do that, I don't know how you get out of this. And so I'm worried. Um, and I want to know, do you think that description is fair? Absolutely, and we're on the exact same page. That's always what I've wanted. You know, it just, 
the pandemic is forcing my hand into evolving yes. into that CEO business that I've always wanted to be. There was something, I don't know if it was in your upbringing or what you saw that encouraged you to say, you know what, at 21 years old, I am going to buy my house outright. So can you walk us through what you learned about money and what led to you making that wonderful financial decision? You're asking the hard hitting questions early. <laughs> When I got about, you know, 15, 16, you know, my relationship with my parents got pretty tumultuous and, you know, it led to a series of events that, you know, forced me to go out into the world on my own. And so by the time I was 17, you know, I had already had my own apartment. You know, I knew that I wanted to pursue music seriously and I made it up in my mind like 19 I was like you know what this is crazy I'm going to solidify myself so that all I ever have to do is focus on music I'm not gonna rely on anybody uh, anybody's you know shelter outside of my own I'm gonna get that for myself so what did your life look like pre-pandemic as far as your performance schedule and everything else it was really great you know uh, the thing is, I had such low overhead that I could enjoy certain luxury amenities uh, because I didn't I don't have any children. It's not like I had major responsibilities that were like, you know, that I couldn't handle. So if I wanted something, I would buy it. If I wanted to go somewhere, I would go. If I wanted to fly, I would fly. You saying that makes me think that you've made changes during the pandemic, which your budget doesn't indicate. It still seems like you're eating where you want to eat. You're I doing what you want to do. You're getting the self-care that you want. <laughs> so I want to know what really changed because here Listen, on paper it hasn't. Do you see this curly hair? This would never <laughs> happen pre-pandemic, okay? Let me tell you guys something. I was having the biggest anxiety attack because I'm like curly hair curly hair it's just like not my thing and everybody's like it's fine it's fine but I'm used to getting like these Brazilian blowouts but uh yeah I cannot afford that my savings have dwindled so vastly that now I'm seeing red everywhere and not just the literal room in order for you to do what you say you want to do. We're going to have to find that 17, 18, 19 year old. So tell us what caused you to make this call? You know, I underestimated the pandemic gravely. You know, I could not imagine a world where I wasn't booked and busy, but I quickly realized that the pandemic was much bigger uh, than I could have ever anticipated. And another thing that we haven't really talked about, but the main reason that I made the call was because I have a charity organization. We do a lot of community work, community service, toy drives, food drives. And I had to fund 90% of that, which took a huge hit to my savings. Um, and that's how I have been living on my savings. And basically I was self-funding my nonprofit organization. Do you, how, do you still have any money in savings? Um. <laughs> the Donovan, yeah. I need to know how much we're working with. Do you have any money in savings? Because we have zero down. Do you have anything in savings? Uh, I, I'm so embarrassed to say. You know what's even yeah. more embarrassing? <laughs> Having to lose your Tell home me. because you've been putting everyone first. Trying to figure out where your next meal is going to come from because you've been putting everyone first. Not being able to do the things that yeah. you need to do for you because you've been answering their phone calls instead of your call. People are always going to need your help, but you're always going to need you too. I, I, can't speak for Dan, but I assume that we have the thing in common that our no game is strong. We have no problem telling someone no because we know the bigger stakes at play. We know what needs to get done so we can say yes to the things that we really need to say yes to. 
The Donovan, what do you have? Like a thousand dollars left? It's like three grand. Okay, so you have okay. three grand left, and you're spending. That means in 15 days you'll be broke, because you're spending six or seven thousand dollars a month. I just want you to make clear: you lost 150 points in your credit score. Haven't been paying your credit card, but you've been paying your lawn and your cleaning person. Somebody well, has. Somebody's okay. trying to look good instead of be good. The lawn thing. I don't have a lawnmower. So I have to have oh, somebody. Oh, I'm getting you one. I'm getting you one. A lawnmower? You ju challenge, accept challenge accepted, my I friend. You now get a lawnmower from me. <laughs> oh, I'm sending you a lawnmower. Do you want a riding mower Listen, or do you want a pushing mower? A riding one, but... You know, <laughs> listen, I, me on a riding mower, could you imagine? Now, maybe if I wear like cowboy yes. boots and, you know, like a tank top, that'll work. But other than that, I could not <laughs> see it in a million years. Oh, oh my God. The Donovan. The Donovan. This is happening, my friend. Oh, no. What is happening here? So another thing that we need you to do is you have this wonderful asset in your home. So... I need you to look into getting a roommate so that you can have someone else paying those home expenses that you're currently paying. I'm sorry, did the <laughs> mic go out, the Donovan? Uh, <clears throat> mm. Yeah, I'm crazy. All, guys. all we need you to do, the Donovan, is look into like it. <laughs> okay. First of all, I'll Donovan, you're lovable. It. You're lovable, but we're going to look into it. We're going to use we're going to use roommates.com. You're going to look into it so that you can find out whether or not. Look, these are all choices. Today's call is what okay. we call slapping the Donovan to reality, <laughs> and <sighs> you, my friend, are broke but fabulous. I will do anything. I, I literally will do anything. Um, so I'm just, yeah, wow, okay.